Hello and welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic on a day when um, a new video appeared on the channel in normal format because my Wordle didn't go all that well yesterday. It took me three minutes. For some reason, whenever Wordle goes slow, it goes really slow in my head. I don't know why the word wasn't that strange. I was just struggling, I think. So let's hope that doesn't carry on into this video. Um, and... I like to think my chances are quite good because we've got a six by six puzzle to do today. Um, but on the other hand, I did that four by four puzzle on April the 1st. And uh, although although I played around a bit with the video length, it did take over 20 minutes for a four by four puzzle. I mean, I still, I can almost not believe that happened, but it did. Anyway, um... Was it really? Yes, it was. Anyway, this is by Hawk Avatar. We'll get to that in a minute. Today, no, yesterday was the last day for our Patreon content, but uh, for the competition, that is, for April. But we are releasing very soon, um, possibly even already. I'm not sure. It, it's either today or tomorrow, sorry. Um, Quinlux's extraordinary new Build Your Own Sudoku Hunt. It is rated hard. Like, if you get through one puzzle of this, and I've I've got through them all, I tell you, if you get through one, you're doing well. Um, they are pretty, pretty, pretty tough. Um, but it's a fascinating concept, and for the real wolves amongst you who like your Sudoku crunchy, that is the hunt to get involved in. I mean, serious kudos to anybody who gets through it, and uh, who gets through it quickly. But that will be on Patreon. Um, you can still check out... Oh, no, actually, Simon's going to bring his um, Fistimafel April Fool solve to the ch to the main channel. So uh, that will be appearing there soon. Really interesting puzzle. I mean, the April Fool, you might consider it a bit recondite, perhaps. A little bit uh, not in the mainstream of understanding of April Fools. It's not really a... Dropping paint on someone prank, is it? It's a bit different, but really interesting. Um, so much going on on the channel, as always. We got some... I was finally able to pick up some post um, recently, and uh, we got some books sent to us, and um, we got some fascinating um, mail, snail mail, from the um, attendees at the... Um, the Martin Gardner Math Symposium, which I can't remember its proper name, G for G in some way. But uh, sorry we haven't mentioned those before. We really have only just seen them. So thanks for those. And you know, maybe there'll be some way of sharing them in some way in the future. I don't know. But loads going on as always. This puzzle, though, it's six by six. But wait, normal Sudoku rules don't apply here because... This puzzle uses six of the digits zero to nine, and the solver has to work out which ones. So that's why it's called six out of ten. That's not a grading for the puzzle. It's saying we're using six out of the ten digits. So zero is a possibility here. Um, you have to place... Normal Sudoku rules apply after that, in a way. You have to place one copy of each digit in each row, each column and each box, whatever those six digits are. Digits along thermometers increase from the bulb to the end. Digits along an arrow sum to the digit in that arrow's circle, and those can contain repeats. Um, now, cells separated by a V sum to five, all possible Vs are given. So there is a negative constraint. These two cells can't add up to five because there's no V in between them. So an intriguing rule set by Hawk Avatar there. Do give it a go on the link under the video. I have no idea how long this will take. Um, you can check the video length to get a clue, perhaps. But I am going to start it now. Let's get cracking. Um, and normally I would fill in all the Vs with one, with one, two, three, and four as possibilities, but that doesn't work here because of zero. Some of these Z Vs could be zero, five. Like we could put zero there and five there. So, what do we know? Ah, look. Oh, look, here's a giveaway. 
Right, those two add up to 5, and they also add up to the number in the circle. So we've got a number. Oh, that's weird. And that gives us another number on that V. Okay, sorry. There is a way in. There is an easy way in. I hadn't, hadn't quite figured that one out, as you may work out. Now, these two add up to 5 as well. And they've got to have some positive number here. You could have another addition of 0, but at least a 1 in the others. So this is 6, 7, 8, or 9 in the circle. Oh, Oh, okay, I know where that digit goes in this box now. It doesn't go on the V, because they're too big to go on the V. So that goes here. Oh, this might be a sort of colouring puzzle in the end. Yeah, how... Could that 6 be in one of those? I suppose it could. Okay. What I'm going to cut... Ah, look, yes, okay, I'm going to colour these 0 and 5. They're the yellow V pair. We must have at least, well, and indeed only, two different V pairs in this puzzle. And why do I say that? Because this is not in a V pair. So that is clearly not the yellow pair, because it sees both yellow cells. That is not yellow, because it can't be 0 or 5. So, two of these three cells in box two, if let's call it that, must be yellow. Two of them. And that means at least one of them on the V is yellow. And if one of them on the V is yellow, it must go with the other on the V. So that's where the two yellows are there. That is zero and five in box two. Now these other ones, okay, I don't know what these other Vs are, but we've established from that, or from this cell, so there are only two V pairs, so I'm going to make the other Vs blue. Uh, that must be this pair of Vs. Yeah, because they can't have 0 and 5 because of that. Oh, I was just wondering, is there any possibility this is something else? No, there isn't. There isn't a third set of V digits in this because of this box. But the other way of looking at this row is those two blue cells have to appear in these three. So at least one of them is on this V. And as soon as one of them's on that V, it's magnetically attracted to the other one. So that's the blue V. I'm tempted to say this. Yes, this can't be the yellow V because that in box four, box three, this is, would put the two yellow cells here. And that can't be, because then you'd have three yellow cells in the row. So that must be the blue V as well. Oh, five, of course, can be placed in this box. So that goes there. That digit is almost certainly this six, seven, eight, or nine. But I'm not sure. Um, zero can't be there on the thermometer. So it's here on the arrow in one of those two cells. <clears throat> that's almost certainly 0 rather than 5. In fact, it is, because those two add up to 5 by virtue of the V on them. If that was a 5, we'd already be up to 10, which that can't be. So we can fill in 0 and 5 there. Now, 0, 0. I was tempted to fill in 0 here, but actually 0 could be on the bulb. It would be a very realistic thermometer, actually, to have 0 on a bulb. Or no... No, real-life thermometers go down to minus numbers, so that's not even true. Um, now, this has not helped me establish what the blue Vs are. Are they 1, 4, or are they 2, 3? I don't know. Now, up here, we've got 5 plus 0 plus 1, 2, 3, or 4. Oh, well, that's interesting. So all the remaining digits, apart from the 6, 7, 8, 9, are low. They're, they're 5 or less. So that one actually is this high digit, whatever it is. Let's make it red. Oh, look, I can place that. That colouring is very well worthwhile. I can place that in row 2, or box 1. Then there's a red there and a red there. There's... what about blues, then? Um, oh, and this 
Well, okay, let's make the other digit green. That's this one. It might give you some small contrast issues, but just follow the logic and you'll be fine. Now, so that's a green-yellow pair with the zero. That's yellow being five. Now, green must be here. There's only one green, and that's there in row two. So this is another yellow. That must be zero. Oh, colouring really is my friend in this. Um, so those are a yellow and a blue. There's two blues, two yellows. Yeah, the colour scheme's getting a bit confusing. Now, does this have to be the high... Oh, no, it can't be the red high number. So the most this can be is five. And what's it adding? Don't re oh no, they're two blues, so that can't be blue. That's yellow. Now we've got two yellows, so that's blue. Right. That can still be yellow because you're allowed two yellows. Right, but we've got two blues and a red in this row. So these other cells are a yellow, two yellows and a green. And obviously, the highest digit has to be here. Zero must be on the arrow can't be in the circle. If green was in the circle, one of those would be a five. Yeah, that's nonsense. So this is the five and is therefore yellow. Oh, that doesn't tell me whether this one is yellow or green. Um, well, green can't be four now. Wherever it goes... Oh, it could be. It could be four there with a one here and a pair of zeros. Act Oh, I'd forgotten the negative constraint. Now, is that important? I don't know. Anyway, let's carry on doing colouring. I feel okay about the colouring. In this one, we've got two blues and two yellows. So the bottom two are red and green in some order. In this one, we've had the two blues. Oh, I don't know. Okay, green is higher than this cell because of this tiny thermo. I don't know what that means yet, do I? Yes. Oh, can this be zero? It can. Or can it? Maybe I need to... Oh, blue. There's a lower and a higher digit on the V obviously, but uh, I don't know. That doesn't tell me which way round they go, does it? This is a bit tricky. Um, <clears throat> right. So, I th now I was going to say there must be a repeated digit on this five. And I think that's still true if you allow for the fact that a repeated digit could be a zero. If there was no repeated digit, even with a zero, one and two and three would be necessary, and that would make six. So there must be a repeated digit, and therefore that repeated digit must be here and here. They must be the same, but I don't know whether they're yellow zero or green one or two. I don't think I can clear that up at the moment. Okay, I need to think of something else. I'm sorry if you're seeing what to do here in a way that I'm totally not. Um, right, there's a five. That's a five. Look, five, five and five all looking into this box. Ah, so that's yellow and is five. So that's the two yellows in this column. So that's blue. That's the two blues in this row. So we've got yellow, red, and green to place. But that can't be red or green. This is <laughs> a naked yellow. I'm not sure I've ever found a naked yellow in a puzzle before. But that is one because it sees both blues, green, red, and yellow five. So that is a naked yellow zero. Ah, and now zero is not on the bulb. 
and that means green is not one. Um, it doesn't mean much more than that. This bulb could still be... Oh no, the bulb must be blue. That's good. And this... And it must be at least one. So, green has become two, three, or four. Does that help anything? Ooh, maybe it does, because one of these is green, is two, three, or four. Now, if, green's was the re if green was the repeated digit, it would have to be a two. That would be zero. This would be one. Let's just put those in as possibilities. That would be four, for instance. Now, green would be two. Now, if that's not green, then this is the repeated zero. So it must be zero or two. And these two are going to have to add up to five on their own. And that's green. And that really doesn't help much. Ah, the red can't be six anymore. Now we've eliminated one from the green. Um, I've kind of used all these arrows. Okay, I didn't think much of my pencil marking there, so I'm going to take it all out. It wasn't conclusive at all. Um, oh, can V be 2 and 3? Then green would become 4. Yeah, that won't work, because there must be a green there. And if V are 2 and... Yes, look, if V are 2 and 3, green becomes 4, then that will have to include... That will be 2 or 3, and green 4 would have to be included there. Right, so V is 1 and 4, not 2 and 3. Green is now not 4, therefore red is now not 9 just from the sum on this arrow. Right, blue are one and four. We can actually fill them in down here on the thermo. Um, one, four pair everywhere. That's become a one. Oh, maybe, yeah, okay, that stops there. This is a four. So I haven't resolved which way around those go, but now we've got two or three and seven or eight, and they go hand in hand based up here. So it's either two, seven or three, eight. Now, can I do this five? That can't be a four because green is two or three. That's too high. So that's a one. That is going to finish off all my blues. Um, so we've got one. And this hasn't cleaned it up. Either it's zero there and repeated twos. Or it's zero there and there. Yes, that does clean it up because that can't be a four anymore. So it is a zero there. Zero is not the repeat, which I had thought would happen. Those are twos. They're green. Zero is, of course, yellow, as we found with our naked one down in the corner. Um, naughty naked zero. Sunbathing in the corner. And... That's a five. Right, so the last zero goes here. This color, it, oh, that color has become not green. That color has become green. That's red. These are seven and eights. We've got all of the numbers done, um, except this, which now adds up to seven. And that is the solution to a very clever puzzle. I don't think pressing the tick will work today. No, it doesn't. It says it doesn't look right. It is not used to a puzzle that uses uh, 0, 1, 2, 4, 5, and 7 as it's 6 out of 10 digits. But that's a very clever puzzle by Hawk Avatar. I really enjoyed that. And it, and it messed with my brain quite considerably. But I think that was lovely. Um, so, there we go. Hope to... Hope you had fun with that one, or watching me struggle with it, and uh, I hope to see you again on the channel very soon. Bye for now.